My name is uh, Dan Jadenfoss, Dan in English, if you want to talk to me later. Um, I work here in Malmö at uh, Research in Motion, TAT, uh, as a concept designer. And when I was asked to talk about screens uh, anywhere, uh, I started thinking about the attention economy that Venkatesh mentioned. And um, it's a really, really interesting uh, question, because what happens if we start to see uh, the number of screens around us uh, grow. I mean, the, so we just, more and more of our field of vision will be looking at screens. Um, and what type of new experiences can we design for these screens then? Right, so uh, the team uh, where I work at uh, TAT, Research in Motion, we um, invent and design and sometimes develop uh, user experiences, mainly user interfaces in the mobile space. Uh, and we visualize uh, our, some of our future ideas. Uh, this is our most famous visualization. Um, it's called the Future Screen Technology, and this video uh, mainly dealt with different types of personal screens, like Venkatesh mentioned. Uh, sort of futuristic, interactive mirrors, uh, transparent screens. Uh, and I think it, what happens when we have more screens is, of course, that you, screens become when they become less expensive, you can put them in more places, so you can start wasting pixels. But I think they will go through a phase where, where pixels still are very, very uh, valuable, and, it, and people's attention is valuable. I don't agree completely with Venkatesh, so it's, we can have an interesting debate between the two of us. Uh, so, when we have computers everywhere and screens everywhere, we have to talk about uh, Mark Weiser's, uh, his vision from the 90s. He was a visionary researcher also at Xerox Park. And he's famous for coining the, the term ubiquitous computing, about computers being everywhere, embedded into everything. Uh, and, and he's also famous for saying that when computers will be everywhere, uh, they better stay out of the way. And so he, he started promoting the idea of calm computing. Uh, and of course, if every computer that is around us would have a screen, there would be a lot, a lot of uh, visual noise for us. But I think he mainly meant when completely designed experiences. I mean, people's houses and embedded devices and so on. I think if you think about what happens in public spaces, there is a, a, a challenge. Everybody is competing for your attention. And so let's take this example. Um, it's Times Square, New York. I mean, a lot of brands here are, are competing for for people's attention. And if you think this is crazy, uh, this is a building in, in Guangzhou in, in, in China. And you know the entire building is covered in different types of, of visual uh, information surfaces. And while a lot of this is, is still neon lights and, or paper billboards, uh, we'll see it being replaced by, by digital screens, uh, digital billboards, pretty soon, I think, because there are several advantages to those. Um, so, Shri will later present some emerging screen te uh, technologies for screens. Uh, one is transparent screens, I guess. Um, this is a demo by Samsung where they show that you can turn any window into an interactive touch, touch screen. Uh, and e-ink technology can then turn any other type of non-transparent surface into a screen as well. So, so potentially, uh, any type of surface can be a screen, transparent or non-transparent. But so what will then be the driving force be behind the adoption of screens? I think that to start, for starters, these screens are going to be quite valuable and, and expensive to roll out. And that means that companies such as uh, JC Deco and other advertisement companies will be pretty interested in trying to roll out new types of screens. They already give away uh, so-called street furniture uh, to municipalities, to Malmö City. All the bus stops here are... are financed by JC Deco, uh, in exchange for the rights to, to, pro, to put uh, advertisement on, on these public surfaces. And advertisement is just one part of the, the attention economy. I mean, it, we have all different types of brands, uh, and we have, we have uh, society, we have, we have individuals, we have 
we have all the traditional media, they're all trying to get our attention in different ways. Uh, Malmö municipalities is, is also playing in the attention economy, uh, trying to provide useful public services to, to visitors. This is by the Triangle Station in Malmö. And I really don't think that anybody wants a future where, where we have too much information, complete information overload uh, with, with uh, brands all over. However, I think there is sort of an information arms race. So, so people are tr all, always trying to find new ways to catch your attention in, in some innovative way. So, of course, a stationary billboard with, with static image will be replaced by uh, a billboard that can show moving images, because it is more attention-grabbing. It, it, it can become a lot more interesting over time. Um, and once we have screens in, in uh, the density of screens around us become, become uh, higher, then we can actually start doing some really interesting designs. So from now on, I hope to introduce a few more uh, fun ideas for people who are interested in designing information uh, in a world where there are more screens than today. So first of all, the, the example from MIT was great. Uh, Venkata showed the, the Tetris on the building. Uh, this is uh, from Toronto. These type of, of games that you play with the lights of buildings are called blinking lights. And I think the first projects I heard of originated from Berlin. Uh, but what they do is they, they take entire buildings and turn them into screens. And Mainly, they are, they are black and white, or, or have a few colors. Uh, and they're really, really crude in their resolution. Um, but that will change. And, and with, with new type of transparent screens, you could turn any building, in, potentially, into a high-res screen. And I think that companies such as JC Deco will try to, to fund uh, entire walls of buildings. You know, they'll pay for the windows if for a new building, or the, the walls if they can put their screens there. Uh, so we need to regulate that, of course. Uh, so I hope that uh, the politicians in the building are listening, and because we sort of need to be maybe one, track, one step ahead in order to, to, to actually turn this into some, some advantage, because society also wants to spread information and provide useful services to people. Anyway, when you have lots of screens, you can start moving things between screens. This is a project we showed uh, in February uh, in Barcelona, where we played with the idea of using many tablets, uh, Blackberry Playbook tablets, of course, uh, turning them into one large virtual surface. And then we could, we could have particle systems that travel across uh, once from one screen to another. So that means, and, and the interesting thing here is that this, is, this system was maintained even when screens move. So if, if we move a screen around, it would still be part of this virtual space, and the particles would end up there eventually. Uh, so this means that if there are many more screens, you might not be able to, to show your message on, on each individual message might not, be able, might not make sense if you show them simultaneously. It's just going to be information overload. But instead, you can take turns in, in in designing, in providing your message, and then you can use a lot more screens instead. So we'll turn into more something more like TV ads, where you have your your 30 seconds of, of ads, and and then somebody else takes over instead of having all these ads at the same time. Uh, and we have some fun geometries here, and with moving screens, we can imagine messages that actually move between buildings, or move from one bus up to a building and back to the bus. Uh, so. We're really leaving the, the rectangular design of, of messages. I mean, screens have been rectangular for a long time now, but in, in, in a, in a multi-screen future, we'll have to completely think differently about how we design our messages. So maybe some windows will just contain particles that emphasize the message which is, which is shown elsewhere. And we can also think about layers of transparency. So uh, if you think about how screens can be combined in depth instead of sideways, you can have uh, bus windows emphasizing messages outside the bus or, or guiding your eyes towards stuff that's interesting. You don't have to read the message on the bus window. It just says that the bus window provides some, some, some indication that you should look in, a, in some general direction. 
Then I think, uh, of course, interactivity is a, it will be a really interesting challenge here. Uh, the, th the fact that the people who design messages want to know who's looking at it, who, who's, who, so they can adjust the message accordingly. Um, by providing useful services, people might actually start interacting with the, the screens. And if they do so via their mobile devices, they can be identified and the service on the screen can, can be something useful for you. This is an example from a campaign in uh, South Korean subways, where it's just a paper billboard, but people shop by scanning QR codes of products. So it's really like going to the shop and you look at things on the shelves. If this was an, a, a real digital screen, you could scroll it and, and look at different things from different angles, so you could see more, more products. However, I think the important thing here is that people interact with it through their mobile device. It means that they don't have to walk up to the screen and touch it, uh, so they can interact with screens that are not just in front of them, and it means that they can identify themselves and get the, the information on the screen customized to, the, to their needs. So that means that you can start with, with digital screens everywhere, you can start designing uh, services that people can use, and those can be both commercial or, or public services, or something semi-commercial. So if you imagine that you want to watch a sport game, but you're just running around with a little handheld device, and the screen is too small to see the ball, um, you might want to borrow a screen temporarily for, to watch that game. And if you're at a bus stop or waiting for the subway, you can borrow a screen, of course. Uh, it will be available for you, and then you might uh, have to read the sponsor message screen brought to you by Company X. Um, or it could be a service, I mean, following the, uh, the, uh, the free email account or free blog account uh, business model, they can give, people can give away full services to you that you can use, in exchange for some information about how you use them. So you might be able to get a screen that you can just use for your, your purposes, but it will know who you are and, and what you're interested in, and uh, an advertisement or whatever message can be displayed on a different screen nearby. So you sort of have the banner ad business model uh, out in the public. And in general, when I've been thinking about this, I think that we can actually see more internet-like behavior out in the general public. So, again, the, the term public computing can be quite suitable here. Uh, I'm not sure I will be the, the early adopter of this. Uh, I might be too old, and I'm, I'm not the person who, who talks on the phone loudly so everybody can hear what I'm saying. But I think a lot of people will actually, could, could actually potentially adopt this idea of, of, of sort of more publicly using the internet. Uh, but that's, that's, again, that's the human behavior side of things. It's really hard to predict. So I think there is an economic argument for pushing out screens everywhere. I think there is the technological possibilities that we will hear soon about. And I think that there's some really interesting opportunities to design uh, interesting experiences here. Uh, it might not be the type of stuff that, that Mark Weiser wanted, the calm computing with, with hidden computers, uh, but I still think there will be, be plenty of good experiences. So, when screens are anywhere, I think designers will be needed more than ever. And these are the images I used, so thanks for letting me use them, um, the internet. Now, over to you. Thanks.